Hey y'all, what's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> so, another day, another Friday. So, I will, of course, I want to give a shout out to my bro, Jamal, at Moonlight Media Music TV. And, of course, uh, Strange Brew Media Group. So, thanks a lot for, for doing everything you do for the vlog and posting it every week, every new chapter every week. So, shout out to him and, and much thanks for that. So, we're going to get right to the chapter, folks. Today is chapter 19, 1975. And so, uh, you know, things were going quite well with the band with Tobias and, uh, and living in a house with Dennis, the keyboardist, and Roger, the bassist. Um, we pretty much had, a th like I said, a three-bedroom house, and uh, it was pretty much like a job there. Uh, we would rehearse during the week. Uh, you know, Monday through Wednesday is pretty much we did, you know, eight hours, had lunch, you know, it looks like a real job. And then uh, probably uh, during during the week, we would, you know, do other stuff like learn new songs and all that kind of stuff. And then on the weekend, we would do shows or if we had a tour, we would, you know, leave probably Thursday afternoon and uh, get there and, and do the do the thing. So um, we had a awesome song selection i love those things and uh we did uh some ario speed wagon and we were doing that was a time about uh the lost in a dream era with michael murphy now i don't know if you guys know much about ario but i i lived in in missouri and so i used to go see ario speed wagon quite a bit uh you know with gary richrath and then uh right up right across the lake over in illinois some clubs over there but they went through a series of singers. They had, I think they had um, Kevin Cronin first, and then something happened with Kevin, of course. And then they got another guy. Um, I'm sure we're not sure what his name was. And then I believe they got Michael Murphy. Was uh, that was during that uh, 70, 74, 75, 76 era, Lost in a Dream. I don't know. I'm not sure how many albums he did. But then Kevin came back, and that's when they blew up. So uh, you know, props to Kevin. Kevin out there. So um, we also did some doobies, of course. We did the, uh, during the Captain and Me era. We did uh, some songs from them. And my most favorite song was Highway Star. Now, there's, you know, several versions of Highway Star, needless to say. There's that, you know, main Japan version. And all co or, of course, there is um, the Machine Head version, which is a studio version. So that was the version we picked because we had two guitar players. And so what we decided to do was do that version with the double lead uh, harmonies uh, on guitar, which was incredibly hard to learn. Um, I'll put a link to that that song so you guys can get an idea. But it's a very, very long solo and all of it's in harmony. Um, I say it's a good you know, minute, no, close to a minute. I'm not sure, but uh, it's, it's a long solo. And we, we worked our asses off, believe me, to get that solo happening. Many, many hours, uh, you know, learn that solo. And, uh, I mean, you know, we pretty much did it just like the record back in those days. Now, you know, even the uh, ascending arpeggios. Um, another thing that happened was uh, Dennis had this new concept and he wanted me to play drums. And so back in the day, I actually started out uh, on drums. So I have some history of drumming. And, you know, I think that has made me a better guitar player, understanding drums and, and the rhythms and everything. So great thing about that, I had my own expense account. So we all, uh, you know, uh, went down to the store and got some drums. We ended up getting a clear set of Ludwig's, uh, you know, the old uh, acrylic, I think acrylic plexiglass um, uh, acrylic drum we put lights lights in them flashing lights in the middle of them it was so 70s so uh you know that we did that and at that point uh the thing that Dennis wanted to do was I don't know if you guys remember but uh Joe Walsh uh during that time was a song called Meadows and Meadows was off the album of uh, Smoke You Drink, Player You Get. And as you guys know, I, I did a Joe Walsh tribute for a while, and that was one of the songs we did. It's a great song. And so um, what Dennis wanted me to do was to to play drums, and also I was one of the lead singers in the band, and, and he wanted me to you know do that also. So, okay, you got to picture this. So the, the song starts out, I'm in front of the band, and uh, the... Uh, they, he wanted me to come out and do the the scat. So um, if you guys are familiar with the song, you know, it starts out. Yeah, Lily, why am I Oh yeah, ah, ah, ah. 
So, so that's that's pretty much what I did. Then I get back on public on stage, and and play the drum, play the play the uh, most of the intro of the drums, and I was sitting behind the kit and I had to sing it. So hope I didn't distort the, the, the speaker there, but uh, that was kind of the deal. It was just a crazy, crazy, crazy song and, and uh, very, very impressive back in those days and just insane. So also back then, uh, I, was, I was a Strat guy back then. I had a, 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 a tobacco sunburst Strat back in those days. And as you know, you know, with guitar players, we never can get enough guitars. And so uh, we decided, uh, the band decided, and I decided I wanted kind of a different sound. So we all went down to Kansas City to this uh, music store, and uh, we decided, or I decided, uh, that we were going to try to do the Les Paul thing. So I got this brand new 1975 Cherry Sunburst Les Paul. It was, it was awesome. It was a beautiful guitar. And, uh, you know, I felt like a, a, a true rock star then because, you know, I could pretty much walk into the store and say, you know, I want, you know, that guitar and just pull off the rack and just buy it. So, um, and of course, you know, management paid for it. So that was, that was, you know, that was a cool thing about it. So that was, that was a really cool time and being able to do that and love the Les Paul. I still have a Les Paul to this day. I got a gold top, but, uh, so anyway, um, now on to, uh, the, the relationship with Debbie. I don't know if you guys remember the other chapter, but the relationship with Debbie was going well at that point in time you know, as much as a long distance relationship could, could, could go. And so, uh, on occasion, Debbie would come up on the weekends and, and see the shows. And then we spend some time together and then she'd go head back down to St. Louis County where she worked and everything. So on Valentine's day, uh, I got a call from her and it was the dreaded call that, you know, no man, boy, potential rock star ever wants to get. So uh, Debbie comes on the phone. She says, uh, hi, I'm pregnant. <laughs> she just goes right to the point. She was one of those kind of people. And of course, you know, those first few seconds was like kind of like tunnel vision and uh, where the you know, room gets smaller <laughs> and, uh, you know, the room goes black and, uh, you know, it, it just it was just a bad thing. And I said, Okay, so what are we gonna do about this? <laughs> she says, she answers, she goes, um, I wanna keep it. So I said, well, we, we need to talk about this, uh, but not now, uh, I'm in rehearsal and uh, you know, I'll call you later. Actually, I wasn't in rehearsal, I just wasn't ready to deal with it, so, uh, and we just both hung up from there. So, uh, you know, hang on the guys, the next chapter is gonna, gonna let you know what's happening. And again, as always, thank you so much for uh, checking it out and have an awesome weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye.